Hello and welcome to episode five, I think we're up to, of Stats Thonk. Um, we're a bit pressed for time today, so we're going to try and keep this one maybe a little bit shorter than normal, but I know that's kind of famous last words. Um, but looking at the plan we've got for this episode, um, this one shouldn't actually uh, drag on for hours and hours, so we'll try and keep this one fairly concise. Um, what we want to go through today, because we've had the uh, the update uh, very, very recently. So we're recording this on Monday, the 22nd of March. So um, we want to talk about update 10.2, which we've just had on all the regions. Um, we're going to go through, um, we're actually going to go and do Wargaming's own survey and use that as a, a talking point for talking about the different bits and pieces that are in 10.2. Um, then we'll touch a little bit on clan battles now that we are, I think, more than halfway through the uh, the current season. And certainly uh, the three of us have had a pretty significant amount of experience doing this clan battle season, so we can talk about that quite a lot. We're going to talk a little bit about ranked now that we are several sprints into that. And then we are going to finish up by covering off some listeners' questions that we've picked up from Discord. Uh, now, as usual, I am joined by the lovely Killabin. Hello, Killabin. Good afternoon, Stats. And the squeakily cleanly shaven Painsaw. I'm not squeaky. <laughs> but you are shaven. Uh, yes, totally. <laughs> he's, just, yeah. he's just been telling us how, how he's just shaved for us, so uh, hopefully he sounds clean shaven. Okay. Um, so let, let's kick off by, by talking about this 10.2 thing. So um, as I said, when um, Wargaming do these updates and they do their official stream on that Thursday, which is the day that EU patches, and they do the EU streams, this is Chris and Conway doing their, um, doing their stream. Usually the, one of the things they do during that patch day stream is they post a link to a survey, which I always find is a little bit odd because... How are players supposed to know what the patch is like on patch day? Has that ever occurred to you two? Yes, yes, it has. And I've put this feedback in. The biggest one was during the Commander rework. And it's like, oh, look, the Commander rework patch has hit. Please give us your feedback on it. And this is before everybody had realized that Deadeye was a thing and how much Deadeye was going to affect the meta. Because on day one of that patch, Everyone was like, oh, what does this do? What does this do? And then and then we, we, we found the dead eye that we know and love today. It's so always I, too early to put the feedback in. So Exactly. I mean, you think that they would wait. I mean, the may, okay, maybe the, the surveys the maybe the surveys open for you know for the entire patch. But I know I remember I went to I can't remember which one it was, but I went to fill in one recently because I felt very strongly about the topic. Commander rework. Um was it Commander Rework? Yes, it was the Commander Rework, and it was already closed. And it was like, it was only, like I don't know, kind of like two days, three days after the beginning of the patch. It's like, what? How, how am I supposed to, you know, I know I have other channels, but other players don't really. So it's, I just think their timing of their surveys is a bit kind of tick boxy, mm -hmm. having come from yes. that kind of world. It Which just is ironic like... because the, the page that they use is called Checkbox. But yeah. <laughs> it is. That, that is true. A anyway, so timing aside, um, we've had you know a few days now to have a look at the patch, and not, some of us looked at it on PTS as well. So I thought we, what we would do is go through the actual survey question by question and just use those as talking points. Um, we can give our answers to the questions. We can talk around those those points. It's just a good way of covering off the things that are in the patch and anything else that occurs to us as we go through. Okay, so Wargaming 10.2 survey. Are you ready? Question number one. What is your WoW's nickname? I, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll skip that one. Question two. What region... Do you play WoWs on? I plead the fifth. African or European. <laughs> but, okay, so all, all three of us play on EU. Not that it makes any difference. Um, question three. Where did you find the link to the survey? I actually found the link to the survey in the official stream chat on Thursday, and I bookmarked it because I don't honestly don't know where else you would find it. Um, maybe they send it out to players. I've had these in port before, actually, as a pop-up. Maybe we'll get it as a pop-up at some point. They ping everyone on the official Discord. Yeah, as well. they put it in a few places, I think. Okay, here we go. Here's the, here's the meat of it. So question number four. From a scale of one to five, where one is negative and five is positive, how would you rate update 10.2? Like... Really want to take that? A solid four? No. Oh, okay. That's, that's mostly positive. Okay. Um, like, the graphics changes are mostly positive. Okay. The Italian battleships exist. 
it's mostly the graphics changes, but there is okay. some uh, critical flaws with them. So, okay. Kelvin? Kelvin? Sure. Kelvin. I, I just found it in the game. You found what in the game? The survey link, as usual. But I always find it odd that it's the first thing that pops up so most people just close it off. Yeah, that, that is true. You get sort of pop-up closure, kind of... Um, pe people are so used to seeing things pop up that they just go, okay. Um, yeah. But I think I think on that one, if you if you click on the sort of what looks like where the where normally the OK button would be, it does actually go and open the browser. Yes. But then you get annoyed because it's closed your game and well, not closed your game, but it's minimized your game and opened the browser. So you just close the browser because you want to mm -hmm. get back to the game again. Kind of I, don't, I don't think I've I don't think I've ever seen the survey link outside of the game. I've I've seen it many many times being posted on the official channel and Twitch. Um, I think I've seen it on the forums before. I've definitely seen it in Discord. So they do spread it around a little bit, um, but I don't always get it in port. I do. I think maybe they sample, or maybe the like the, just the messaging isn't working because I, I definitely don't always get it. But but anyway, so so how would you rate uh, update ten point two? I mean, the graphic updates is very nice. Like, again, the art team have pulled it out. And show that they really, really do know what they're doing. So how how do would you rate more. on a scale of one to five? Four. Four. Okay. Uh, I think I think I feel the same. I think um, the the graphic stuff really carries it. I think without that, this patch is going to be a bit of a. Meh. Mm. Um, so I yes, oh, yeah, I think I would also give it. A, I forgot about those. Yes. This well, this patch. is. This is the thing, right? So, okay, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Question five. Did you manage to get any of the early access battleships in 10.1? If so, which ones? So I got Dante Alighieri, Conte de Cavour, Andrea Doria, Francesco Caracciolo, and Vittorio Veneto. I got the four through seven. Mm -hmm. okay. did, uh, did we get Dante Alighieri? Did we get Dante Alighieri without Twitch Prime? That was... Oh, I don't know how you got it without Twitch Prime. I got it with Twitch Prime. You had to start the bundles. Because that was the argument. Because people oh, were complaining. Yeah. Because oh. that was they the got 900. Dante via Twitch. Yes. Why did they have to spend the bundle to get it yes, again? Yes, because that was the 950,000 credits yes. or whatever it was, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I have up to Caracciolo. Yeah, that, I remember that being quite... I remember that causing quite a lot of confusion amongst Twitch chat and Discord. As to why it was like that. Yeah. Such so, sorry, sorry, Pence, you got up to the seven, did you say? Yeah, I got the, okay. the caricature. But it's a bit weird, I... like, early access Twitch Prime, pay to access the tier four. It's a bit weird, weird one. So I use, because CCs get um, some free doubloons every month, I actually used my monthly doubloons for 10.1 to buy some of the bundles, which I wouldn't have done otherwise, because I don't spend any money on tech tree ships normally. Um... So that's the only reason that I got Veneto was because I got some free doubloon bundle tokens. Otherwise, I would have had I would have stopped at seven. Um. So um, and I obviously in the the bundles that I rolled, I didn't roll a Lepanto. I am actually genuinely curious whether it would be cheaper to like you know buy all of the bundles or to just convert the free XP. Yeah, I mean, you could probably... The thing is, because there's an RNG element involved, it's not easy to calculate, but you could, you know, do it on an average, but... No, but you, you, could, you, could, you could make a graph. You could be stats block with the graphs and the stats and stuff, but no. Yeah, I could do, but no. Okay, question number six. How appealing is Battleship Marco Polo to you on a scale of one to five? One. Three, but Three. my issues are not entirely gameplay related. <laughs> Does it have the correct, correct number of prop shafts? <laughs> no, they're claiming it's something that it isn't. Okay, go on. Uh, essentially, they're calling Marco Polo their rendition of what's called UP-41, which was a private design offered to the Soviets, and not what would have been the the post Littorio Italian battleship development. But then that goes into issues with Lepanto and, and Colombo as well. 
interesting. So, the most interesting part I heard about that was how close UP41 was to UB40, and I was about to make a red, red wine joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the key demo of the game is in the right age group to get that joke. So I, That's I, right. I appreciate that joke. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I appreciate this from, you know, purely from a gameplay perspective, because the history isn't quite as important to me. Um, and so... To me, and, and the thing is, the three of us are in kind of a privileged position, having had a chance to play Marco Polo before release, and also um, Painzer and I having got it immediately as well. Um, and and Kilwin, did you get it? I can't. Remember. I, I got it immediately. You got it. Yeah. I considered her potentially useful in glam battles. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're in kind of a privileged position, and and I guess that's you know that that's our role, especially. Um, pains and eyes as cc's to kind of help you guys figure out whether it's a good ship to go for or not and and actually given that it's a um relatively it's supposed to be relatively short range the long range accuracy is terrible um and actually up close it's pretty tanky um as long as there's not 11 ships shooting at it, it's actually it's kind of okay if you push a little bit. So Yeah. I mean, I won the one one with my Riga in clan battles the other day. I'm mm -hmm. not impressed by it remotely. I, yeah. So having played it in randoms, nah. But you can definitely make it work in... I had one... I think I played two games of ranked in it. One was terrible and one was okay. Um, if the sap behaves, she's yeah. incredibly powerful. I remember one of our guys yesterday playing clan battles got whacked by one. Yeah. Uh, in a cruiser. I can't remember. Was, was there Wolf was it Donskoy? Donskoy, yeah. Wolf yeah. Donskoy, he was like, he I got... don't want to have that happen to me again. I'm going yeah. away. Well, if you, if you catch this, one the, the biggest thing is, though, it's competing in the same slot as Georgia, Musashi, John Bartz, Pommern, like, you but know. She, but arguably, she's not. She's only competing with Pommern, given you can't get the other three anymore. <laughs> I suppose. True. But I think I'd still rather play a Pommen overall. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna push, having the uh, the option of the torpedoes is quite nice. Mm. Um, but in random battles, um, it just for me it just doesn't do it. So I would suggest if you're listening to this and you're wondering whether you want to get it or not, my personal recommendation would be unless you play a lot of ranked and you like to play tier nine in ranked. Or you play clan battles and your team is considering using it. I, I can't recommend it. Half the damage, double the sigma, and I'll consider it. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know. It's interesting. If you're a collector, it's an interesting ship. But um, I think there are there are better tier nines to go for. To be honest, yes. Especially if you've got some of the in, the, the existing ones that Painswell just mentioned. Yeah. What about the so go, go, over her. going back to the previous question then about the um, the tech tree ships? What's been you guys what's been what's been your experience of playing those have you played them very much they're fine up to the six they were solid battleships dispersion can be a bit awkward at times but they're consistently effective enough that i'm I'm not i'm not feeling i'm not having your um internal dynamics tats when you go i wish i was playing something else mm, okay that's a good test because that they're, they're fast enough that they can do so they can move quickly enough to respond, and their guns are powerful enough. So the that, problem that is... isn't with the power of the guns, it's the problem is with the guns never actually hitting anything. It, it's, it, it's infuriating to play for me. Like, because I used to play in destroyers. I'm not used to, like, my guns yeah. missing every salvo completely. Yeah, I think because of my play style, I tend to be closer, so dispersion is less of an issue. I think with these, you either need to press w really really hard which is going to be it's tough to do that well um without just you know getting focused down because you've got to time it well you've got to position well you've got to angle well you've got to do good talk prediction all these kind of things um or you've got to run a dead eye build because otherwise you ain't hitting nothing um and so i think these are very prone to making the player quite frustrated um so, but but they'll you know, but if you're a more aggressive style battleship player, then these might actually suit you. So it's not everyone's cup of tea, but you might want to give it a go. Do you just need to push carefully? Um, okay, so let's go down to uh, question seven. So this is change topic. 
How would you rate the difficulty of the combat mission groups in update 10.2? They don't explain what combat mission groups is. That's just the phrase they use. I'll be uh, honest, I haven't looked at them. So I'm I... assuming this includes like the directives, the dailies, all those kind of things. Oh, I haven't had a I'll bring it up now and have a look. <laughs> like the thing with my me and combat missions is like I will go through all of my combat missions. The only one I'll ever struggle with is you know like clan battles, hurricane. That's the only ones that I'm ever yeah. going to struggle getting. Like everything else, it just gets so done. You, but you play a, a large number of matches because of course you're you're playing all the test ships usually as well. Yes. Um, whereas I don't, so I don't get through as many battles but i one thing i noticed in this patch and the previous patch was that the directives were really easy well um they always start out easier week one and then it gets progressively harder i didn't notice struggling with it at all i think i finished it even playing as little as i do because i pretty much only play on stream um, and then i'm talking for an hour in between every match so i gen i just genuinely don't get through that many matches um I remember, I think I finished I finished week one of both of them, like literally halfway through the first stream. And then it, like, it only took two days to do the, the late term missions. Oh yeah, like week really? one was really easy. Week two, so that goes active tomorrow, 250 main bat or secondary battery hits. It yeah. doesn't even say in, in a battle. It just says get 250. Or get two and a half thousand ribbons elsewhere. Um, get sixty planes shot down. Shoot down sixty planes by AA fighters. Get direct kills or in caps. Sounds pretty easy. Or five point eight million damage. Uh, do ninety thousand, sorry nine hundred thousand HP worth of damage to ships, or get eighty kills. Um, get sixty torpedo or citadels. Or get 120 kills, earn 6 million credits, or do 12 million damage. Uh, in one battle, cause 180,000 hit points worth of damage, or win three battles in Marco, Leone, and Lepanto. They're all very easy. You will do them, you will complete mm -hmm. this just by playing games, I as think long as you're above tier 5. When they're those cumulative ones where it's just like accumulate damage, accumulate ribbons, whatever it is, those are always really nice to see because you know you can just eventually do it, even if you have a really bad day. You just just keep plugging away at that, and you'll you'll eventually you'll do it until um, they start putting weird restrictions on it. Like, well, they, so they, but they now they usually do an either or. Well, have you not seen the one that's coming up? Uh, get one torpedo hit ribbon in an Italian battleship. That's for April. Yeah, Fools. that's April. What's got to be April Fool's sure. <laughs> well, I just I'm just really hoping that they add a torpedo launcher to all the Italian battleships. For well, a it's come on, please. The, the news article said it was go sharks, and that mission is specifically for the eagles flag so it might just become wayne chrysanthos's little game of let's be really spiteful and not let anyone get that flag for april fools because we did <laughs> you might be right there um yes so if you see that one don't get confused it's an april fool's joke um but yeah so th this either or thing where it's like cumulative Part A, or you can do part B, which is more difficult, and you can do that in one match, but it's a reasonably high bar. I think people generally like that. I like that having that option. Um, it, of course, it means that strong players or very lucky players can do it pretty quickly. Um, I think the one that I've seen people struggling with or complaining about is the ones where there's that chain. It's like the, the weekly chains. Like, I think it's the Twitch missions, where it's like get... 1,000 base XP, 1,100 base XP, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, and then the next week it starts at 11, it goes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then the next week it goes up and up and up. And you can't get the final reward unless you finish the last one in the chain, which is, like I don't know, get 2k base. Which, for some players, that's pretty difficult. So I've I've seen quite a few people say, well, I'm just that's just never going to happen for me, so um, I can't finish those missions. Um, and I, I, while while I like the idea that there are some difficult missions, I do sympathise with players who look at that and just go, "I just can never achieve that." Um, so I I understand that point of view. Um, I mean, theoretically, if it's like a directive, 
there should never be an incompletable directive tied behind a 2k base reward. If anything, the rewards for like a 2k base mission to me should just be like stuff like I don't know, like comma, like super, like super signals, you know, the Ouroboros, yeah. Leviathan, that kind of thing. That should be like, I don't know, reward your best players. Reward should reflect the effort required to do it. Yeah, and, and but I don't think these did because it was like three camos or something because it was the Twitch chain. I think it was Italian tokens. Oh, was it tokens? Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Um, luckily, I don't think that they were necessary to get to the Caracciolo. So, no, yeah. That yeah. would suck. Can you imagine? It was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you can't you, have like, the ship. You get through the entire combat mission chain for everything else. You know, you've got all your bundles from the armory. I was like, all right, you want the Caracciolo? Okay, go get 2k base XP. Go on, you and your tier 5. Go on, get out there. Go on, go on. So, okay, do it. So, I, bit, I think uh... that so those base XP chains are the only ones I think people, some people have a problem with. Um, and given the amount of stuff that's going on in this patch and the previous patch with ranked and clan battles and big hunt and everything else, I think having the missions be a bit easier than normal, I think, is sensible. Because there's a lot going on and you can't do all those missions necessarily in all the modes. And there's a separate mission chain, of course, for Big Hunt, which is the next question. Um, so what do we think about Big Hunt? How would you, this is question eight, how would you rate Big Hunt from a scale from one to five? Um, personally, I really enjoy it. Four, five, like, look, look, look. let's say a, a, a 4.2 or something like that. You know, I quite enjoy it. I have no opinion on it. Like the um, mode is fine, and but I have no interest in playing it, so I guess my feelings are irrelevant. I am exactly the same. I have no opinion. I haven't played it. I don't plan on playing it. I, I... think it's quite fun. Um, mostly because there's something kind of appealing about running around in a DD that is 150, 60, 70, 80 knots and torpedoing crap out of things. It's just great practice for yoloing. It's quite fun. <laughs> you know, it's like... It doesn't matter what I'm torpedoing. Players, bots, you know, both of them, really. It's just quite satisfying to rush up and torpedo something. <laughs> so I, I remember when uh, Big Hunt, not sorry, not Big Hunt, when Key Battles, the original version, came in Halloween um, last year, and I went on PTS. I played it too much on PTS uh, because I really, really liked it. I liked the backstabbing part of it because, you know, I'm not interested in PvE at all, but it had that element of PvP, which was really interesting. This whole idea of... Oh, maybe I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Ha ha, you know, double cross. I like that idea. That was cool. Um, Because you were never quite sure whether the other person was going to, you know, turn on you. Um, But I just played it too much on PTS. And then when it came to live, I played it a little bit, like for a day. And then I got bored of it um, because of the PvE element. Because I just cannot be bothered to shoot the bots. I cannot be asked with it. So, um, so now Big Hunt's come along and it's the same format with... There's a lot of PVE in it. I just doesn't interest me. Um, I, I can't be bothered to play that bit to get to the backstabby bit. Um, I mean, you can always just pick a fight right at the start with somebody. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's not that's not the same because you you know you're going through the whole game like working with a certain person, a complete stranger, probably, and and then like maybe eventually getting to the octagon with them. This happened quite a few times with me in um, the previous version where you get to the octagon and you're still teamed up with them and then suddenly you've got to fight against them. You're like, oh, this is interesting. Um, but yeah, if it didn't have the PvE element in it, I would be very, very interested, but I just can't be bothered with it. Yeah, I've been taking like the min-maxed approach where like, you know, I'll, I'll just not division with anybody because they're just going to slow me down. I'll, I'll be like, I've got like this route. I'll torpedo the thing in front of me, I'll torpedo the thing in front of me, they'll go forward, I'll torpedo the next things, then I'll go into the big red circles, I'll torpedo the things there, and then I'll go find someone and kill them. That's that's it. That's all my that's my objective is to just like, you know, get my XP farmed and then go f just go find people to kill. It's, you know, it, screw the backstab part, just go killing people. They're all just like, oh, do you want to be friends? And then you'll just sail up next to them and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we're friends. Stab pump 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 torpedoes all up the broads. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I'm a lovely so, person. I won't backstab you ever. Division um, with me. So I think the pains were and I. But the next question is: Did you did you take part in key battles last year? Um, so I, I, pains were and I both did kill a bunch. Did you? 
I did a bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. What what was it that was there something about key battles last time that ma- has made you not want to it do this one? It was novel and new, and it is no longer novel yeah. and new. Yeah, same here. Um, so so I guess Painzor, because you're the only one who played it. What are the things that you like about the new game mode, and what are the things you dislike about the new game mode? Um, well, the Octagon's gone now. Oh, has it? Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely not playing that. That was the best yeah. bit. Um, I used to intentionally not go through the gates so I could go to the Octagon. Because it was the best bit. Well, you can always just hang around at the portal and just kill people there. Like, you don't yeah. need the Octagon. Like, the yeah, octagon but it's just... like the shrinking border, and the... it was just cool. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm just doing my dailies in it because I want the camos for... I want that camo for the Ireland. I've already got one for the Akazuki. Uh, I'm not interested in one in the Magi. I just want the camos. That's basically it. And then I'm going to see if there's anything else I want from it. Like, I'm basically just there for the collectible stuff at the minute. Like, if it didn't have the collectible stuff, I probably wouldn't be playing it at all. Because I've had my fill of it. And now, like, it's actually at the point where I've... Like, it, it's a, a min-maxed grind for me. Like, you know, I, I'll go try and do it in the most optimum way possible instead of, like, being having fun in it. Like, I, like my dailies at the minute are completely optimized to be like, okay, the way I have to do this is I'll play one game in my Yagumo because it gets the 500 bonus XP from the first battle of the day. And then I'll go play a big hunt for the next two battles because there's a 2,500 mission chain that'll get me 5,000 battle points, so I'll do that. And then I'll go play my ranked because there's a there's the um there's a mission for playing getting 5k base xp in a cruiser so i'll do that and then i'll get my three stars for the day or three wins to get my steel for the day you know it, it's just like <laughs> it feels like i'm playing a spreadsheet at the minute you know what i mean way more organized than i am for sure it's not even organized <laughs> it's just like it's, it's just like a mental process now like i I, sure. I play the game like a spreadsheet at the minute because there's so much stuff on and I think that's a shame because, like, I remember the Benham event, for example, which was based. I, th- I think I'm right in saying that was based on one of the one of these special game modes, wasn't it? And uh, that was the Mogador brawl, wasn't it? Was it? Copy Mogador thing, yeah. Um, and I remember a lot of people, you know, like really, really liking the event at the beginning, and then basically at the end, it just turns into a job because the grind was so long. And I think it's a shame if that happens. So well, I, hope, I, I hope no one's doing that. Wargaming... gaming. Um... It's a free-to-play game, so they're trying to get people to play. But they have a serious problem with, like, how much they expect players to grind for what kind of rewards. Because if you take a look at some of the biggest ones that you'll point out, right? You have your PTS missions every week. uh, Every month, sorry. And there was a period of time where you would do the massive grinds, but you'd get a TSX premium out of it at the end of it if you did three months' worth of testing. Sure, it's a lot of effort to get the TSX, but you get a TSX premium. And then there was the Epic Games test where they expected you to do so many battles. I think they're talking in the region of like 200 battles for people or something like that to get a super container. A super container. It's ludicrous. I mean, fair enough, they also had the other offer where you get like 75% off of the balloons bundle or something like that. I don't know what the exact details was, but that's not the point. Basically, Wargaming, like, the carrot that they hold out is a bit... um, I don't know, it's a bit moldy. It doesn't look that appealing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Bit of a diddler, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on to something uh, that I think all three of us are pretty positive about, which is how would we rate the visual improvements? I know there's a few things we want to talk about in here, but but just first of all, one to five, how would you rate it? I think my rating is somewhere between a four and a five. It's pretty good. There's a couple of little things that just there's a little niggles. niggles here and yeah. there but overall it's an excellent it looks edition. amazing um and i was one thing i would really like to do actually is see footage from before they started all these updates because we've had a lot of updates if you cost your mind back over the last few patches we've had hdr lighting updates on all the maps and the ports we've had changes to the textures on uh, the islands and, and the water surface and we've had the introduction of the sort of distance haze effect which really adds to sort of the distance effect um as well as now these sort of combat based effects i'd love to see the like i'd love to be able to shoot a piece of footage with the old game and then shoot the same piece of footage 
with the new game and see the difference. I might actually ask Wargaming if they've got any comparative footage. Because I'd love to see that. Anyway, I, I didn't um, ask. So, Paynes, what, what would be your number rating? Uh, the more I play it, the more my rating goes down. Like, oh, okay. originally it was like, you know, 4.3, so now it's getting 3.7 because there's more and more bits and bobs of information that I'm realizing is no longer accessible to me. Um, for example, there's the shell sizes is yes. one of the biggest ones. All of the primary bat main battery guns have had their shell sizes standardized, normalized, whatever the hell you want to call it. But basically, the shells of a Jutland, six of those coming over the island, look exactly the same as six shells from a Shikishima. You can't judge at a glance the threat level of shells unless you can like somehow do the mental maths to be like, actually, that's going at that arc, so that can't be a destroyer. That's got to be a battle. Like, you know, you, you're just looking over the horizon yeah. for like shells. You don't want to have to stare at the shells for any longer than necessary. And plus, the shells actually blend in with the sky a lot more now because of the tracer changes. Because the tracers are all based dynamically on the lightning of the map, making them a lot harder to see. I had a game in my uh, Tashkent on Tears of the Desert, and there was a lion firing at me from where the sun is, and I couldn't see where his shells were. It, it, like, there's more and more things that are getting harder to tell. Granted, there are some things that are easier to tell now, like that guy's healing, that guy's got his Damacon on, that guy's running his Hydro. You can tell that now. But some of the other information's gone out the window. Smoke screens, impossible to see. I yeah, well, yeah. I mean, this is something that's annoyed me for a while. So, not under the new scheme, but under the old scheme, when you used your uh, binoculars, not with a spotter plane, looking flat across the water, if you use your binoculars, smoke completely disappeared, including the the boundary marker, because obviously you're uh, you're viewing it at such a flat angle that the pixel just doesn't. It doesn't render any pixels because it's a really, really small line. But if you launch the spotter plane, you can see it again, but you still can't see the smoke, but you can then see the boundary of the smoke. Now, it's even worse. <laughs> so it, it used to be that, like, oh yeah, there's a smoke screen, zoom in, smoke screen's gone, which is annoying. Now it's, is that a smoke screen? Yeah, no, that's definitely a smoke screen. And then you zoom in and then it's completely disappeared again. I, that... That I think they had an opportunity to fix that and they didn't. That and that annoys me because when you're trying to smoke shoot something, and you you know if you like a role playing essentially in my head, I'm like I'm standing on my ship and you're like ah there's a smoke screen over there and there's a destroyer in it and I lift my binoculars up to look at the smoke screen and all I can see is water. I mean that just doesn't make any sense, and it makes it very hard to smoke shoot something because all you can see then is the. Uh, the, the tracers coming out of the guns, they don't always start at the guns, and they still don't always start at the guns. It's um, it's this balance that they keep trying to play between arcade and realism. Like, some of these effects, like, are very arcadey, and some of the graphics effects are also, like, trying to be realistic. Like, the new smokescreen effect is trying to be realistic for an artificial mechanic, and it kind of feels weird. Because the boundaries of the smoke screen are very hard to tell now. It's it's hard to even see is that a smoke screen? If if you're at the wrong angle with this positioning of the sun and a destroyer that you're mm. in a gun in a gunfight with at seven kilometers is smoking, you can't even tell that he's smoking. It's 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 And yet other times it looks like a solid concrete wall. Yeah. 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 I've noticed that. Because sometimes it's really obvious. And it so, looks kind of fake. Graphically other times it, it looks, looks really great. But gameplay wise, it's taken a hit. Um, and the more that I'm playing on this new graphic update, the more of these little hits here and there of like, I, I should know this, but I don't anymore. And it's really, really weird. Like, we've got King of the Sea coming up soon. And some of these graphical effects are going to be amazing for King of the Sea. Specifically, that guy is running his hydro. How yes. long we can see exactly how far it is. We can see that neither of these guys has their hydro running. There's all these torpedoes coming in. Blah, 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 blah. We have drama. We can create hype, all that kind of thing. And But if I can't see the smoke screen that the guy's shooting in, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's weird. 
The other one, which we haven't mentioned yet, which um, I've seen a lot of people complaining about, is that they can't, not they can't see them, but they're, they're finding that torpedoes are a lot more difficult to keep track of now. Um, and this isn't something that I personally have noticed, but I understand what people are talking about. I've seen people say, well, the tracers are much more kind of ephemeral now, and the, they say the triangles are smaller. I haven't noticed that myself, but... Um, it's not the triangle, it's the wake. Uh, the wake is... Like, usually, it, well, it, I say usually, in the old version, I would be able to look at a torpedo, I would be able to look at the wake, I would instantly know the angle my ship needs to go to to get through these torpedoes. With the current system, I am just, like, trying to follow two or three torpedoes with my eyes to try and get a general idea of what direction it's moving in, and there's, like, all kinds of, like, is, is, it, is, it, is it that angle? I, I, did, like you lose with the motion of your ship combined with the motion of the torpedoes and its inertia and the motion of the water surface. It, it's really hard, like to, like that d dodging torpedoes is like five times harder than that. I'm I'm getting used to the water surface update from last time, but it occasionally it's still causing me issues in terms of making my ship move in a certain direction because I think it's moving and it's not. Yeah, like I turning or slowing down, speeding up, whatever it is. Try playing legendary module Des Moines. You'll see your ship drifting yeah, out the corner of your exactly. eye. You'll mash the W button to correct it, and then realize that you just shot out because like exactly. the water's tricked you. Yeah, getting fooled by the water can be a bit annoying. Um, so I but I know that that wargaming are aware of that, and they are looking at it. I have got used to it, but it still causes a bit of disorientation. I don't feel sick anymore. But it still causes a bit of disorientation. Um, so yeah, my my wish for the smokescreen thing, my only wish, would be that they make the the boundary line much more visible. Um, just make it's it. It's a thicker. double edged sword, though. Just think how often are you sat in the smokescreen, and like everyone else has the problem. It's I don't know. Do you want to shift the power of balance more towards battleships or? Well, you know, I just I just really enjoy shooting things in smoke screens. Yeah. And well, not being able to see where the smoke screen is when I zoom in. I can see it perfectly when I'm zoomed out and then I zoom in and I can't see it anymore. That just to me makes no sense whatsoever. Um and every time I every time it happens to me, it completely breaks my immersion. Um it's not quite as triggering as the whole you lose your lock and you shoot the island thing which drives me insane but it, it's pretty annoying um so i wish they would do something about that or i wish someone would bring out a mod i'd be quite happy if it was modded um so that you can increase the thickness of the smokescreen boundary line that you can see it at which point we get back into the realms of mods providing an unfair yep. advantage you and do. they should be part of the base game you such do. as things like score timer such as things like Navigator, such as things like the Traffic Light mod. Indeed. It, that, would, that, would actually, that would actually be a very good topic for a future episode, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. perhaps, we, perhaps we'll save that one for a future topic. Um, have you noticed any changes to your game's performance after update 10.2? Nope. 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 Next. <laughs> Still working. <laughs> um, I think all three of us are on reasonably powerful machines. Uh, I actually limit my frames to 60 to keep my machine quiet for my stream. Um, so no, I haven't noticed any uh, differences. I'm still getting the odd stutter here and there, but that has, that's no different to what it was before. Um, my port still makes my graphics card like sound like a jet engine. Yeah, attempt to go into orbit. So no, I haven't noticed any differences at all. Um, so the next question was, if you've encountered any issues, have you encountered FPS drops, desync, graphic artifacts? I don't think any of us have really I noticed of any sort. of that. Because um, when like if you when it's stuttering, which is usually when it's drawing things, when it's drawing like initially rendering the first few ships, when it's initially rendering the first smoke screen, the first torpedoes, you get a bit of a stutter. It doesn't register yeah. as an FPS drop in the FPS meter. You just the game just pauses for a second. Um, and that's always been a, always been the case ever since. I think it was ever since they fixed the the render delay that caused so many issues. Uh, okay, question fifteen. How would you rate the division star feature? 
So for those of you that don't know what the hell that is, it was introduced, because you might not know, it was introduced, uh, this patch, into the clan section of your port, if you are in a clan, and it allows you to earn rewards for playing with your clanmates in a division. How would you rate that? Completely yeah. pointless. Completely pointless, because I was playing with them anyway. But getting a few extra tidbits for the clan? Yeah, it's nice. I, I just... I don't know. It might be nice for a newer player, but... Or a new clan. Because mm. you I can think... earn... Towards the end of it, you can earn quite a lot of oil. Well, if you think you've got a 50-man clan, right? And then you do all the permutations of the divisions. You get, you get, you get a chunk of oil, I guess, but... I don't know. To me, it... Uh... If you got a new player joining your clan, sure, it's a great way to get them like in a division, get them chatting with them, get them reacting with other people. But I don't know. It it seems like a rather useless feature. But I am talking like as a person with tens of thousands of battles in the game. I I don't need the the trifling rewards that I'm getting from that. Yeah, yeah and it's... you don't need any encouragement to play with clanmates. Uh, you'll well, be doing it anyway. Yeah, I'll be playing clan battles, and clan battles yeah, counts. Yeah, the clan battles counts. It's like. Like playing, it was just a case of like after the first uh, time it was added, I was like, "All right, everyone, make sure to go onto your onto your clan page to grab all the stuff because there's a bunch of stuff now that you can have." I tell you what, though, you're gonna have to pay me more than fifty oil to play with Aldra. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it, it, for things like this, I do often sit and wonder, okay, what's their? Why have they put this in? And the only thing I can think of is. They're trying to encourage people to be more social behind the game because that is more likely to lead to people staying playing the game. Because if you've got a social uh, relationship going on with other players in the background, um, then you're more likely to keep logging in because you're there to see your mates. And so I, I, I guess it's to encourage people to, to form social relationships. Um, because the rewards aren't amazing, as you said. It's a little, it's a little bit, but and people who play in divisions anyway are going to carry on playing in divisions. So it's only really going to attract people who maybe are in a clan that doesn't really play together very much. But then, is that going to be enough to make them start? Um, not sure. Um, and and also, it's you know, it's not really been that well advertised to the players i don't think so you might not even realize that it's there no. i forgot that it was there until like yesterday i happened to look because i was looking at our clan battle results and i clicked into the clan section to see how you guys were doing in clan battles um whenever it was that i wasn't playing saturday and i was like oh oh yeah there's that division star feature i completely forgot about it um so i'd imagine there's a few people so you know it's there if you're in a clan go and have a look um especially if you're doing clan battles that counts uh, and you can get some rewards. Um, the next question was uh, related to that. Says, are you in a large clan? All of us are in, in a clan of more than 20 members. Um, do we plan to use this feature? Uh, are we using it anyway, I think, would be the... Yeah, I, I don't think you can not use it. Yeah, okay. it's one of those things. It's like, I'm not going to go out my way to division with people. I'm just going to end up doing it by accident in clan battles at some point over the course of time. So before we move on to clan battles, there's one last question on the survey, which is going to spark an interesting debate, which is how appealing is the cruiser Austin to you? After you. <laughs> okay. I haven't bought her yet. Yet. Okay. That's, that's interesting. So it's a possible purchase for you then. It is a possible purchase, but I am in a convenient position. I can... Yeah. I can do it if I feel like it. Look at that. How much? Because so, you're sitting on quite a large amount of steel, aren't you? Sixty thousand four hundred and. And, and which steel ships do you not currently have? I didn't get Summers. I haven't got FDR. Okay. I think that's so, the only two. I'm so not, you, there's got. no reason, not not really a reason for you not to get it, other than just no. saving steel for future Something. ships. Something. Yeah, it's like the most recently announced ships, like. Druid and Constellation, mm. I'm thinking might end maybe up still. Vampire 2, perhaps. So I can't just... possibly comment. Exactly. I'm not commenting on the performance of the ships. I'm just sort of sitting there going, well, if they're steel, 
historically they're more appealing to me than Austin, even though Austin is interesting in itself. Wait. Why can't you comment, Pin? Uh, about the potential of future ships. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, but, but you can talk about Austin. So, um, uh -huh. so my experience of Austin has been mixed. So during the final, actually, no, during the first stages of testing, I didn't play at the end, but I I was really struggling on the. I only played a couple of matches, so it's a very very small sample. But I really struggled to uh, not just get one shotted. It's a very very vulnerable ship. It's very very difficult to play. But if you can keep your head straight and concentrate and actually, you know, position well, make sure that nothing scary can take a shot at you, you can do really, really well in it on your own. So I'm talking now specifically about solo random battles because you don't have a smoke screen. You, you know, you're, you're out there um, in the thick of it. So I have had one really good game that I had on stream. I need to go and find it, find it and highlight it, actually. Save it, because it's a really good example of like how to play this ship successfully. Um, you've got to like use your island cover. You've got to shoot conservatively. You must keep an eye on what is aiming at you. Um, is an ambush predator. Absolutely. And it is lethal if you can pull that off. This thing melts ships like you would not believe. But... On the flip side of that, if pretty much anything looks at you, you take a Citadel. Because no. it's got 32mm side plating, which will bounce shells at certain angles, but you've also got a 16mm nose. So it's a it's a it's a tough one. Um my experience of this is just any shell that hits you, you just goes boom. Um so you really, really have to watch what you're doing. However, if you're in a division, if you're in clan battles. If you're in ranked with a cooperative, you know, smoke destroyer or whatever, um, this thing could potentially be ridiculously powerful. Because if you can sit in a smoke screen and you've got something to spot for you, um, it's just nasty. Right. So this question, however you answer this question, is basically you're going to piss somebody off. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, I have seen flame wars left, right, and center over Austin. And it comes down to the simple fact that for 15 seconds at a time, it is the single most overpowered ship in the goddamn game. For 15 seconds at a time. Provided, then, provided you can find a willing victim. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're willing or not. Like, for 15 seconds at a time, you are an absolute beast. Um, and then for two minutes, you do absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Yeah. So... It's about how well you can maximize that impact of your 15 seconds versus how well you can keep yourself safe over the course of the next two minutes and, you know, use that to reposition. The, get, I, the know, idea of target. the 15 seconds of, of, of murder is you catch an enemy DD, you hit the booster, you murder it, and killing that DD then and there gives your team a much better chance of inevitable well, victory. you say that... But, or you chunk something sick for a large amount of health. I well, the thing is, the the sap is one hundred twenty seven millimeters. It doesn't overmatch DD superstructure like the Venezia sap does. So you can yeah, just true. angle to it happily. Um, so you know, if you catch it broadside and it's stupid enough to continue sailing broadside, yeah, sure, it's dead. Two salvos with the main battery reload booster, it's dead. If you catch it bow on, like any sensible destroyer, you don't have a radar. So like if 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 you as a destroyer get ambushed by an Austin, it's your own fault. There's no way that you don't get ambushed by this thing. You see it coming a mile away. Like it's got 12 color of concealment, yeah, sure. But you know, you, you know, like you, you, actually it's 10, isn't it? What's the concealment on Austin? I think it's 12. It's anyway, it doesn't matter. It's just like it can stealth talk. <laughs> um it's it's If you're a high level player, you can find use case after use case to get ridiculous amounts of damage on things that don't see you coming. In any sort of actual competitive environment, the enemy brings a thunderer and you explode because it just shoots HE next to you and every single part of your ship is incapacitated and HE penned to death and HE citadel and just generally you're going to have a bad time. You can throw it in a smoke screen, I guess. I don't know. I don't think we're going to be seeing that the Austin King of the Sea, are we? 
But it would be banned anyway. Cause it would be no, a, yeah. it won't. It won't be allowed. It no, actually, I think. Me. Isn't I, the... I'm guessing it won't be allowed because it's brand new. Because it's it's within the last patch or two, so it won't be allowed. Mm, I I okay. would guess. And, and again, well, if it if it isn't banned, if it's long enough, because I believe King of the Sea starts at the end of April, mm -hmm. so it's going to have been in for at least a patch. It could be there, but hypothetically, if it is allowed, do you think we're going to be seeing Austin's on the kiting flank? I think it's. Bit... Potential. I think the teams that we saw last time using smoke Nevsky combinations might Nevsky, try Austin. Nevsky, Haraguma, Austin as a yeah. very which scary was the, which was the Russians. Yes, mainly. This is a slightly different use case because with the Nevskys, you're looking to shoot things at longer range. So you've got like a kiting Venezia or something like that. You're trying to burn down. Well, it's more this is not that radar. use case. This is trying to Nevsky catch. This is trying to catch the enemy destroyer out, basically. Um, it's not not even just a destroyer though. He will so, dismantle most cruisers. But it's so risky. That's the problem, because if you can see where it's shooting from, and you can absolutely see where it's shooting from while its reload booster is on, um, you know, if the battleship takes a, a shot at that smoke, you know, I don't like your chances because if you catch even one of those shells, um, you're you're pretty much toast. So, well, I don't think you're going to be. Pop on your reload booster full broadside in the smoke screen anyway. Be well, you are, but you're not going to be full broadside the battleship. You're going to have an idea where the battleship is. Yeah, you know, but it. But if you're angled, if you angle your 32 plating to it, you're showing your 16 mil nose or tail. That's the problem with that cruiser. Is that yeah, against but you have a enough time to react from the cross map battleship shots. Yeah, to make maybe an it's a bit of a risky prospect. I think. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we might see a couple of teams, given the number of teams that enter. I mean, you're talking potentially over 100 teams. Um, We've seen yeah. Colbert's in COTS, so yeah, Absolutely. Sure. I, think we could, I think we could see it, and I think it would be really interesting if any of the uh, more experienced teams decide to try it out. Well, um, I know for a fact that Malter and his friends have been lauding the power of the Brogan mm -hmm. Austin, so maybe O7 will try something. That might be fun. So so taking a step back again for, for the listeners... Um, you need to consider, if you're considering getting this cruiser, you need to consider you as a player um, what it is that you're looking for in this ship. If you are um, a super duper unicum cruiser player who's used to playing ships like Colbert and Minotaur and things like that that are pretty squishy, fast firing, then you're going to be just fine and you don't care about what we think anyway. Yeah, I was going to say you don't need our if, opinion. <laughs> if you are like an average player and you find the idea of this appealing from a fun point of view, go for it. You will have fun. It's just that some of that fun might involve you exploding every now and again, or quite a lot. Um, so you're going to open fire. Something's going to shoot at you. You'll have fun shooting the whatever it is. They're going to have fun shooting you. End of match. Because you really need a lot of skill and experience in order to survive in the ship and do well. Um if you're, you know, a, a pretty good cruiser player and you're looking to, you know, boost your map awareness skills and um, situational awareness, this is actually a pretty good ship to, to get from that point of view if you're looking to improve. Because you will definitely understand when you've made a mistake. Um, so it's a pretty high skill floor, pretty high skill ceiling kind of ship. And so that means it's going to it's inevitably going to end up with the reputation of being ridiculously overpowered when actually it's probably not overall on average. It's just that in the hands of certain players, it's going to be utterly ridiculous. Certain players who have more public reach. Yes. Whereas in the hands of an average or under average player, it's going to perform under average as if it were underpowered because and it has is. that very steep slope. And this is one of the things is why we don't balance by uh, we, like... so, so it's balanced I don't know whether it's actually balanced but it could come out as it's actually in the data it's actually balanced because bad players are really bad in it good players are really good in it <laughs> um, so it comes out overall as being average but actually you don't remember the crap ones you only remember the amazing ones well it's the um, same problem they have with the Fanda 
the Le Fantasque originally. Yes. In her earlier iterations, she was built in with the 75% main battery reload booster. They realized that it was a pretty dumb concept, and they changed it shortly afterwards and buffed the base reload, which this is one of the other things I wanted to talk about, was um, basically, I don't think that Austin should have been released as a steel ship. I think it should have been a research bureau ship. I think Ohio should have been a steel ship. I think competitive ships, you know, just have like a standard job, no wild gimmicks, you know, that should be a, that should be a steel ship. Something with a wild gimmick like this, like a Paolo, that should be research bureau. I, I think, I think, you know what I mean? Like, is it just me that thinks mm-hmm. this? It's, I know what you mean. We, we're yeah. kind of blurring the lines between what each of these resources is meant to be. Yeah. Originally, you had your steel ships was, this is your competitive monster, hello Stalingrad. This is your competitive monster, hello FDR. This is your competitive monster, hello, whatever the hell else. Summers, I guess. Yeah, like Summers, no gimmicks, just a solid destroyer. Stalingrad, a couple of gimmicks, solid super cruiser. Like, Paolo Emilio, all of the gimmicks. Research Bureau. Ohio, no gimmicks, should be steel. Like, it, I, think, I think they need to reassess what they're doing each of these ships for when it resources. Because, like, at the minute, it just feels like, all right, we're going to play slot machine, which, which, re- yeah, or, like, it, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Is a slot machine or is a dartboard? Yeah. Like, this ship is going to be for free XP. It does feel like that. No, you're right. I hadn't thought about that before. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, it just feels really random. Which is also, like, part of why. I'm hesitant but hasn't Wargaming said in the it? past saying that they decide what a ship's going to be for very late in its development? They have said that, yeah. Yeah. And therefore, it might very well be ship's done, it's balanced, roll a dice. <laughs> it, it could be as simple as they look at the resource lakes. Like, okay, what what's like this quarter? What's got, like, what have people got the most of? Is it free XP? Is it coal? Is it research points? Uh, and and they just stick it wherever it's going to soak up the most resources. Could be as simple as that. And it also Pop. takes into account the fact that Austin is more expensive than other steel cruisers. He's actually more expensive than a Stalingrad. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of value per steel, I mean... If you if you play in a clan competitively, you know which one would would give more value to the clan. It's a tough question to answer, and it really depends on the meta. Yes. What develops? Does it, does Austin get used or does it not? Well, this is the thing. We have the concept. We have ship bands coming up for uh, in the sea. Now the general consensus for bands. We were all expecting Petra Pavlovsk to be the ban. Can Austin be the wild card that upsets that? Like, oh, I just think in in competitive competitive. So I'm actually talking about like tournaments competitive. Either a ship gets used, or it doesn't get used. I think either a lot of clans will use Austin, or just it'll just get ignored if it is allowed. Um, unless you, unless one of the one of one of the incredibly good teams, your TWA, your Smile, your O Seven, yeah. go. You know what? We're gonna we're, just, we're gonna just, upturn uh, the meta, <laughs> especially especially in the runner up match. Yeah. yeah. Look, if anyone's gonna start doing something weird, I'm expecting it to be guys shooting friends. Yeah. Yeah. True. 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 But they have the competence to do it. Yeah, and that's the scary thing. Can you imagine? Right? Can you imagine? You like screw your um Wolfpack, uh, Clubbers. Can you imagine what Seven Austins is going to do to a ship? I don't think Seven Austins... The thing is that Seven Austins are infinitely easier to kill than Seven Clubbers. Sure, you get one reload, you're dead. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't think you appreciate just how much DPM that is. Oh, no, yeah, but I think against like full-on genuine capital ships, I think even Austin's will struggle to burn down. I don't uh, know. <laughs> go the, go, go watch a way. few YouTube videos. I think you'll find some examples of, I, of capital ships in, being pretty pretty nuked by that thing. In 15 seconds, I've done like 60k with Thundra. So, yeah, but it is certainly a situation where I, I don't think it will be a commonplace pick, but I definitely think the teams who can exploit its full potential will be exploiting its full potential. I am very, very concerned about what kind of weird gimmick comps you can come up with for Austin. It's going to happen. Someone's going to bring it. 
Someone's going to bring it. And we're all going to be watching very, very intently. (laughs) That's the thing. And like with competitive, in even in clan battles, you know, these things catch on really, really quickly because one good clan will see another good clan do something like, oh, we're going to try that. And if it works, suddenly all the clans are doing it. Yes. So, yeah, it could, it could, could, you know, spread pretty quickly. Or not. Well, this is the thing. Last year, we were all saying that we didn't see how Petra Pavlos could be viable in any way, shape, or form. Yep. All the focus group for Cots, <laughs> no one, nobody saw Cots, like, nobody saw Petra on the position. But was Chicky Bricky part of that focus group? <laughs> or were Chicky Bricky informed of the focus group results, <laughs> then decided, you know what, we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so... You know, like, Watch you, you can movie. laugh at me all you want for suggesting multiple lost in compositions, but we'll see. <laughs> so, yeah. I definitely think we will see her. I'm just he- I'm just unsure how many we will see. Seven. <laughs> so you, it's a team of seven Austins, really? Yeah, may, may, maybe, maybe, maybe Bobs, if they enter. I don't they, think they... Bobs have the floating steel. No? Okay. Also, like, don't they? actually, we haven't had it's, it's not the entries aren't open yet. Other the signups aren't open for cards no. yet. No, no, we haven't, we haven't even had the dates. We have Conway announced announce it on the official stream. Did he announce the dates? Date? I think he, no, I think he, I think he just said it was around this time, end of April. I think that's what we've had. No, he yeah. said the exact day, did he? Yeah, for the start, but not for the um, not for like the schedule. I'm usually doing other things when the official stream is on, so I just have it up to get the crates, and then usually I'm playing clan battles. Anyway, what's the so the, so Wargaming said that survey takes ten minutes. <laughs> We've taken an hour. <laughs> taken an hour. Good going. Excellent. A true, true, true stats thunk style. So, um, okay, let's move on. So, I'm going to pass over now to Killabin, and we're going to talk a little bit about clan battles. Right. So, since we're recording this on a Monday, we were expecting to see any additional restrictions. So far, nothing has been announced. We may see them tomorrow, we're unsure. Um, but as it stands at the moment, we are three, we have three weeks left of the season. Uh, the the teams teams are ending up in the positions you will expect them to be, maybe plus or minus two brackets. Uh, meta still seems fairly fluid. In the sense of you're not seeing the same seven ships every single game. Um, obviously, the ban on the 18 inch battleships and the restrictions on Alaska and Mogador have meant that the wolf pack tactics have sort of gone away, though teams have been shifting to more like four. We have been seeing, especially this weekend just gone, more 4DD teams uh, are using that sort of lineup's inherent mobility to outflank and overwhelm a more conventional lineup we ourselves have been running three destroyers though one would argue that a mogador or an Udaloy in that lineup is essentially a pseudo cruiser um but overall i'm very much enjoying the season i don't i haven't felt any major issues or restrictions on it sure you want to restrict the thing that you find difficult to kill or annoying but overall, this is the best clan battle season since before Carriers. I, I'm not sure if either of you feel any differently on that. I think um, that's been quite fun. I think I, I agree. I, it's been probably the best clan battle season I have been involved with um, since I started playing. Um, I think had the initial that initial meta that was starting to develop of the just like take five Mogadors kind of thing. Or like four Mogadors and a Jutland or whatever. Um, had that continued, that could have ruined things. Because mm. inevitably, every clan has to take the same lineup to counter that lineup. Because you yes. just can't counter it with anything else. Uh, we tried. You can't. You just get over- overrun, basically. So um, so I, I think that is... That to me sells this restriction system. I'm not. I wasn't sure about the restriction system because I like the idea of having a free market economy. If you like, when it comes to composition, um, I would rather you... balance change were applied than. This... Yeah. But, but it's like ships that ships that are average at best in randoms are incredibly good in competitive because they benefit more from coordinated teamwork and such. You know, well, I, I 
Go on, Pace. Go. We're gonna, well, this is the same problem we're going to see with Austin. It's got, we're going to see a lot of coordinated teamwork for it. So oh, yes. I, I, I don't think that ship should be balanced around random battle performance. I am in the minority. I think it should be balanced, trickle down balance. I think is an actual legitimate thing. I think we should be balancing based on competitive, but that's a not discussion, not for now. But does that not then make them behave weirdly in randoms? Yes, and the case of like, okay, by that logic, you go, okay, so no one plays, let's just say, no one plays Republic in comp. Therefore, mm -hmm. we must now buff Republic. Yeah, no one's going to say that Republic needs a buff. Yeah, no one's going to say it doesn't need a buff either, though. Like, it no doesn't need a buff. Yeah. So well, give a 33 millimeter plating, see how that goes. But I mean, like, say, take it the other way. So if you say, okay, let's say that, let's just pretend for a second that we know what Austin's going to perform like in competitive, and we say, okay, it's going to be ridiculously overpowered because you can chain smoke with it and do stupid things. So you need to nerf the absolute heck out of it to make it even vaguely balanced in competitive. So people actually have to think about whether to take it or not. Then you take that same ship over to random battles, put it in the hands of a solo average player. You're not even going to get out of the starting blocks. Because it's going to be so bad. So, and, and random battles is the vast majority of the game. So I cannot agree with that. So I agree in the a... sense of that if a ship is disproportionately popular and effective and competitive, lost. Yes, then it should be nerfed. It should be nerfed in such a way that it no longer becomes the be all end all ship for comp. So yeah. we saw basically I kind of agree with the flavor of the month nerfing sort of the sort of everyone played Henri, Henri got nerfed. It's... But in that regard, it was more a case of people were playing Henri, not in the way the developers expected people to play her. It, it's, it's, well, the problem is we saw this with the Venezia nerf, mm. when Venezia wasn't the problem. No. However, Venezia is a problem but... currently with a Commander rework. Well, it's not different, that's a different story yes. entirely. But... but, unsurprisingly, Every time we talk about competitive and balancing, it all comes back, back to, to the elephant in the room. Yep. <laughs> it's, we, we, can look. we can't escape it. It, 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 the, it. The fact is, it's there. They are there. We know it. Like, we accept it. We all know that they're a problem, but, you know. <laughs> well, we consider them a problem. Whether the powers that be do is a different matter. Well, they don't balance around competitive. We've just discussed this. Exactly. Mm. They don't balance around carriers either. <laughs> I think the fact that they've just done a tier 9 clan battle season and the fact that King of the Sea is being run without carriers suggests that they are aware of the issues well um, they is an interesting term that's a, well there's two different they's in, in those two examples um, because of course Clan Battles is obviously controlled by St. Pete's, and then Cots is controlled by, arguably at the moment, Prague. <laughs> arguably. <laughs> Who knows? So, um, so the, yeah, those are two different kind of things. But, but suffice it to say, there are wargaming staff, inevitably, uh, who are aware of the, particularly the spotting problem, I think, with carriers. Um, so I, I think perhaps they've given, like I said a lot in the last podcast, I think they've made this clan battle season a tier nine to give themselves some breathing space so they can actually have look go back and look at some data and have a proper good long hard think about it um so so who knows what we'll what we'll see happening in that space but um i don't think you'll get any argument from any of the clan battles players that carriers are a problem um because it does no. it, le it leads to problems like that venezia thing i think the the Henri nerf i think was well done because it, it was specific, the change was specifically targeted to counteract the way that it was played in competitive, which didn't yes. really affect the way that it's played in randoms by the average player. Whereas the Venezia change was kind of more uh, wholesale. Yeah, the Venezia change. And nothing yeah, to do with Venezia. Was, it was yeah. like, that was a change to pen angles and, like, yeah. 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 There. So. So I, I, I'm enjoying the season. I, I think it's great. Um, I'm honestly kind of nervous as to what the next season's going to be. Um, yeah, 10. 
carriers, yeah. two carriers, cyclone, and uh, every ship is banned that like doesn't get citadeled from above. So you're gonna have the Venezia banned because everybody's gonna be taking that. Then you're gonna get the Goliath and Petros banned, and then you're gonna be left with their uh, Marcels and Hallands. <laughs> I, I, like... I for one welcome our new first overlords. <laughs> oh yeah, because they're not gonna get deleted by couriers. So, yeah, wow. So uh, the, the problem is, I think, uh, after giving the community this amazing season, where it actually is working pretty well, and I think the ban system is actually producing some pretty nice, balanced comps. We're seeing a lot of different ship types. Actually, ban every CD, CV but audacious. There you go. Let's see how well, that, that goes. Arguably, that would happen, because... Yeah, in the CV season, initially, logically, that would happen. All of the carriers initially, every team would run a carrier. At the, well, at least at the top end of the scale. And every carrier would be an FDR or an MVR. Those would get banned. And then you move on to Hakuryu. And that gets banned. I mean, it's just, you just, you like, next, 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 next. Um, so it would be interesting to see how Wargaming dealt with that. I would be yeah. interested to see if an audacious season is as oppressive as the Hakuryu season. And True. Richtoff and N50R, because... I mean, if your logic is, if your opinion is that carriers provide too much spotting, then regardless of the carrier, that would be a problem. If your concern is primarily on the alpha strike capabilities of the carrier, then no, an audacious is a lot easier to mitigate, and it's a lot, it's a lot harder for an audacious to do a lot of damage quickly. I think audacious... It wouldn't be, wouldn't be as audacious bad. He's essentially a flying cruiser. It relies on dot damage. I... Oh, I... I think an audacious season wouldn't be as bad, but it would still suck because yeah. it's the spotting that really ruins mm -hmm. the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, sure, FDR and MVR can you know like really punish something, but um, that's not the main problem. Well, it's it's a secondary problem. There's also the guaranteed crossfire wherever the hell I want with them. Um, yeah, what's well, it's it's the limitations no... on mobility? Yeah, there's no there's no secrets. That's the thing. That's the thing that makes competitive fun. Is are they are they moving a is there a destroyer going that way well, and we just don't know until it you know until we get some information and of course with a carry you just go can you just go and see if the destroyer is over there yeah right yeah he is don't worry we'll, we'll just throw a twelve kilometer yeah, radar which is why no one takes destroyers or sneaky cruisers or whatever so yeah so so suffice it to say this tier nine season really good yeah feedback I've, for war gaming love it. it more please next season. Tier seven, please. Uh, yeah, because Belfast <laughs> would be banned in tier seven. Belfast, but it would be interesting, would, right? Would it though? Yes, it's not it, as good as she used to be. I don't. I, 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 I'm definitely in the it's balanced now camp. Um, you say that right? I'm going to get farmed by six of them. <laughs> oh, of course. At one point, we, we oh, obviously that's the point. Like, oh, it's okay. We can play seven Belfast. Just go. Huh. Wait, does IFHE Belfast pen uh, sign up? I don't think it needs to because it's 25 mil. I don't remember. Is it her... 25 mil? I think she pins 25. Isn't it sent up 20. It's 25 up about 50 lower. There's <laughs> like a mental processing going on. It's like. Uh... Right, 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 right. Tier 7, so she has a different pen formula. Yes. I can't yes. remember. It's one six, one six, isn't it? One six. <laughs> Good experience. Please wait. Know what we're Maths about. in progress. Pens are just throwing a random spanner in the works. Uh, twenty five. Like, it pens twenty five point three. I thought. I thought Synops upper was twenty six. Oh no, it is twenty six. Yes, they all got buffed up to twenty six. That's my mistake. I'm thinking of the old system. Yeah. Still. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't without okay. IPG. With IPG, okay. it does. But I'm guessing it doesn't pen the deck. No. But in that case, if you're running into lots of Synop, you bring King George's. And it turns into Schlagfest. Yeah. I think it would be an interesting. Well, you're going to be turning full broadside. Are you? It would hey. be the season of premiums, but I think it would be. Interesting. It would be the season of premiums. The moral victory season. Yeah. But, but I mean, the start but of there'd the be season no was, but there'd was be the no season carries. of premiums. It's, like, it's this, right? If you had to choose to play a tier 7 season with no ship bans whatsoever, or a tier 10 season with carriers, which one would you choose? I would call it the hide and seek season. 
Day seven, absolutely, no questions. Of course. Are you, are you telling me my hide and seek joke was just like not good or what? It was not good it? enough. It, look. Uh, look, I'm hilarious. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> if I, if I could play Goodbye. the cricket sound Goodbye. right now, I would do. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> you know, you come back because we need you to talk now. It's your, it's uh -huh. your Europe, uh -huh. Europe, okay. <laughs> Europe. Correct. Because we're going to move on now to talk about uh, the current rank season. Ah yes, stats look has very kindly prepared me an infographic which says uh, a lot of numbers on it that I can't actually read. Apparently, more people played this rank season than the previous rank season. How many of them was that stats? Like, what are the increases stats? So I, you might have seen in the news that um, Wargaming posted some preliminary stats for for this current new season two because they started the numbering again. So new season two. So so far. There have been 279,000 participants of this rank season globally. Uh, and I just randomly picked an old rank season. So um, although Painzel's pointed out to me off recording that this is actually a flaw in my logic, but um, old rank season 17, which I chose at random, which was September 2019, uh, that had 100,000 participants less globally over the entire season. 179,000 instead of 279,000. However, Painsaw quite rightly pointed out that that was a non-COVID year, so there may have been less players playing anyway. Um, but I don't think that quite accounts for it, because if you look at the number of logged-in players, that's been very stable for the last two, three years. I hate the fact that we have to like specify whether a year is non-COVID now. I know, it's, yeah. It was the COVID before, years. Before the COVID and after the COVID. I mean, it's, it's genuinely a thing. Um, but logged in player numbers have been very, very stable. They have been up slightly during COVID, but not that much. Um, so it it looks on the surface like this rank season is significantly more popular than the old format. Um, the other thing that's interesting in these figures is it looks like ranked is relatively far more popular in CIS on the, the Russian speaking server than it is on any of the other servers, which are very consistent with their participation. It'd be interesting to figure out why that. What about, well, okay, logically, Wargaming are, or Leicester Studios are a Russian company. Their, most of their employees are Russian. So did they proactively or subconsciously configure the new systems to suit Russian player styles? I mean, the, I, 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 I've thought about this many times when it comes to things like differences in meta, differences in competitive play style. The game, like the thing that we log into is identical across the servers mechanically. So it has to be a cultural difference because the player is the only variable. So, yeah, it's got to be cultural. Either um, the language that Wargaming is using around the game encourages Russian players or Russian-speaking players to behave differently, because we've seen that the translations aren't always the same. Um, in fact, some of the translations actually mean the opposite in Russian as they do in English. Thank you again to DMC, DMC for being our on-house translator. Thank you, DMC. Um so it's got to be it's got to be cultural maybe maybe russian gamers are just more into competitive modes than more casual modes uh i don't know reason. let's let's investigate counter strike and see how they do it like legitimately let's, let's it, it would be genuinely interesting to look at other games yeah. um and see whether there's a similar trend but it, it i mean like if you look at um if you're looking at the news article you can see it's 93,940 players have played on EU and 85,544 have played on CIS. Um, but the difference in the server sizes is quite substantial. So although it's fewer players on CIS, um, there's far fewer populators, far less population. The proportion on CIS, of yeah. CIS players playing ranked is greater than EU. Proportion is way EU more popular. something like twice the size? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's only like a 10% difference. So it's significantly more popular on CIS. Which is really interesting. Um, Paints anything, anything else you want to talk about with ranked? I, I don't really know. Like, there's uh, the Takaris question. You could ask. I can I will. I was just about thinking, like, so 
What is your current modus operandi for ranked? What are you doing in ranked right now? What is your objective in ranked? What kind of gameplay are you looking for in ranked? Okay. Both of you. Win farming. Get the wins. That's it. Done and dusted. League. If I qualify for the next league while doing that, then I will attempt to qualify for the next league. Hmm. But ranked, ranked has always been the sort of third mode I play. My priority has always been clan battles, randoms, ranked, because the ratio of effort to reward is always in clan battles' favour. And I happen to be playing as part of a good team who gets consistent wins. So my rate, the amount of uh, steel I earn is better. Yeah, which axis is slightly higher than you in the current standings. <laughs> That's about okay. you. But within our clan, Bravo is beating Alpha, so it's fine. It is, yes. Mm. Uh, I think our Bravo was as well. Quite a while. I think one I of played more games than us. Typhoon 1, the other one than Typhoon 3. We're both T2. Yeah, so on we're average, on... we're about equal. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my approach to ranked is um, actually fun. So I am currently viewing ranked as my main game mode. Because I prefer 7v7 to 12v12. It's more fun. You have more control over the match. Uh, the players, on average, tend to be slightly more skillful than in random battles. Um, I know it's a bit of a joke. Oh, really? But no, no, really, they are. Um, and so it's just a more enjoyable experience. I wish I had um, your ranked teammates. <laughs> I was just thinking that. But, I mean, like, but the thing is... Yeah, okay, even if you get crappy teams, 7v7 is still more enjoyable than 12v12. It's just less chaotic. Um, Until it's like more... carrier happens, in which case I find it a lot less fun because you're more likely to get focused all year. Yeah, that, that is true. It depends what ship you're playing, of course. Um, but, but you know, that you can get a carrier in... Right, you can get double carriers in random, so I mean, it's... And that's the kind of game that I just pretend never happened, and I just mm. yolo to my death because I would like but, to get out of there as much as fast as possible and take something with me if possible. Because of the time that I'm streaming, if I'm doing ranked on stream and it ends at 1am, I'm usually streaming for another hour or so after that, and I have to go back to randoms, and I always find myself thinking, ugh, I wish, I wish ranked was still on, because I just prefer that format. And so I'm, I'm farming wind steel. In... Um, in silver so i i went from bronze to silver because uh, i can do that reasonably easily um you get slightly more rewards in silver for doing the wins um if you carry on to get the doubloons and the camos and whatever um i've got no intention of going to gold whatsoever because i prefer the mixed matchmaking the 9 10 matchmaking that's in silver because it's more interesting more ships available more ships you see on the enemy team tier 10 versus tier 10 is the most boring thing ever so that's why I'm staying in silver. I've got no intention to even bother reaching rank one unless I happen to get near it while I'm getting the wins. Um, and I guess that's why we're seeing more players playing this version of ranked. It's because it's more accessible. Um, but does that make it competitive? I don't think it is. I think it's just 7v7 randoms at this point. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of doing the same thing, except I'm just farming wins and gold. Um, I made the decision consciously to to go for rank one and qualify from silver to gold for the extra 200 steel available a week. Uh, just because, you know, if I, if I rank out early, that's what, an extra 800 steel over the course of the season. Yeah? Question mark? It's not like yeah, that, but it's basically. significantly more stars to do that. Um, Not really. You only have to get the additional stars to get your... Oh, so if yeah, if you want to get the maximum, sure. Yeah. If if you're only grinding your wind steel, um, you only have to do the additional grind once to get your silver qualification done. But your win rate will be lower in gold. It'll be lower, yes, but um it it's not like you have to care about your win rate at all. The, no, but you have to put you'll, you'll end up putting more time into it. Yes, but um you also get more steel. Again, you get, the new you get system, more steel. like the old system, comes down to effort to reward ratio. If you think the ratio is good enough, people will do it. If they don't, they won't. Yeah. Personally, I think the That's ratio where sandbagging just comes in. Bouncing off the bottom, like sandbagging. Like, I, th I think just sitting in gold and farming my wins there is fine. That's a thousand steel a week. You, know, you can get the same in silver. Uh, if you, yeah. 
It's just more effort in silver to get the, the thousand because you have to go all the way to rank one. Wait, is there a bonus 200 steel for ranking out? I can't remember. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, each they, of the each of the rank ones has 200. Yeah, so if you if you hit rank one, that you, you have to hit rank one every sprint. I don't. I just have to farm wins. So it's it's actually less effort in gold, I think, if you have it's it, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I do see what you're saying. Basically, I'm gonna sit in gold and I'm gonna farm my wins here, and then I'm gonna decide if I want to farm the doubloons too. That's that's it. I'll play th I'll do three wins a day and then so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and as a um, you know, significantly above average player, that makes sense for you. Um, I think for for an average player who maybe has like a fifty percent randoms win rate, who oh, yes, in gold, so. if they manage to get to gold, would probably have well like a forty percent win rate. Um, is not going to have a good time. If you manage to qualify for gold with a forty percent win rate, I am impressed and <laughs> appalled. And also, I'm referring you to mental health services. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, there was a question from Taku on the subject. Yes. What is your opinion of the bi-weekly reset of Ranked? Is it too long, too short? Does it drag the entire Ranked season out so much that you really can't call it a season anymore? Do you imagine people forgetting when it resets or that it resets at all? Yeah, speaking of Tak, Tak once asked me in a DM going, when's the Ranked thing change? And I'm like, every two weeks, he's like everything is either a weekly or monthly. That's how it works. That's how the world should work. Anything else is weird. I've had so many people ask in Twitch chat. When's rank reset? Does rank reset? When's the, the isn't it the new st like so many people, um because it is in the UI, but you have to like be on the right page and hover over the right little you know tooltip thing mm. to find out when things are happening. Um, it doesn't it could, it could very easily just on the surface of the UI say say like six days left five days left but it doesn't really do that very well no no because we're too busy hiding as much information as possible because we want yeah. to give the ui a nice little sleek like just aesthetic the fact that you have to click on two different tabs to work out how much steel you can get like that yeah, kind of completely pointless. put it on the same page please i don't need to have a separate tab like all it is is you're hiding information for graphics i, I it's it's just it's ludicrous to me. It's like you're Born sacrificing. All the substance never works. Yeah, you sub. You sub what is it? User experience over user interface, whatever, yeah. something. Like that, yeah. Oh, you need a good a good UI breeds a good user experience. Absolutely. Um, a flashy and actually, UI. And actually, you should. One. You should. I happen to be a trained UX person, so uh, you should always grow your interface out of UX requirements, not the other way around. So you work out what is it that you want. The experience to be and then you form the ui around that you don't think okay we've got all this information which you need to shove it on a page can the user navigate that yeah they can get around and get all the stuff they need yeah that's fine that's not good ux just show me all of the data on one screen i don't care if it looks overwhelming as long as the data is there it's fine look at the detailed statistics tabs in the port have you ever looked at that and felt overwhelmed no because it's all there and you can read it and you can digest the information at your leisure like I, we have that ridiculously detailed page, but you can't have a list of rewards on the same page but as a list of stars. I do wonder how many people don't realize that a lot of that stuff has extra information when you mouse over it. Every time I do that, I think, I wonder how many people there are that have never seen this because they've twirled open the section and they've gone, oh, that's interesting. And, it, and like it. Because they don't realize you can mouse over where it says torpedoes and, and it will give you oh, some sorry. even more information. What I meant was um, on your stats page, not the detailed. Oh, okay. Right. Page. Good, 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 good. But yeah. Good. yeah, that also um, that. Yeah. Because there's, there's loads of things like that, like in the, you know, in the port with the, the guns and the torps and detection and AA and all that kind of stuff. You can mouse over those sections and people maybe don't realize that's a thing. This game is full of hidden information. Um, and yet some of it's still not available even yeah, though they hide a lot yeah. of it like the overmatch threshold good luck finding that yes, in game exactly exactly so so i i, I don't it's not the going to taku's question about the bi-weekly i think a week was too fast two weeks might be too long <laughs> um no, the 10 days but the thing that concerns me is not how long the sprints are it's how long the ranked in inverted commas seasons are, um, and the fact that wargaming seem to want to run it almost continuously. That's to me, that's not ranked, unless it has a continuous ranked rating attached to it, like say League of Legends. Um, 
like what's the point it's just it's just another battle mode one moment it, someone's at my door okay, <laughs> okay. it's not well, let us know who it is <laughs> hopefully it's not my neighbor um <laughs> <laughs> well my my neighbor had uh some uh, unfortunately had some medical issues earlier and um, so i'm very hyper aware of my my front door being knocked on by my neighbor right now in case he's in trouble anyway um so yeah to me ranked at the moment especially if they're going to do it back to back to back to back seasons uh, in my head now it's not ranked anymore it's just smaller form factor random battles with different rewards that's the way i'm thinking about it and honestly that actually makes me want to play it more because I found the old ranked far quite stressful, honestly. Oh yeah, ladder anxiety is a thing in many, many, many games. It comes in many names and many forms, but like the amount of times that like I'll be sat there in port and it's like, like, do I want to play a rank? No, I'm gonna have to do a game of randoms to warm up first. Because like yeah. I'll, I'll play another game of randoms. That didn't go very well. Yeah. Like if people are afraid to go into rank because exactly. the, you have to be on peak performance, are you gonna lose your star and go down and then be angry and then not have to do it again and I don't know. It's, it's the star system doesn't work. <laughs> I don't like it. See, in random battles, if you lose a battle, that's it. It's done. You know, you put that in a box, and then when you press battle the next time, the results of the previous battle doesn't. It bears no relation whatsoever on the current one. Whereas in if you've got that ladder in your mind, and you've let's just say you've had a run of like five wins, you're like, oh wow, this is really cool. I'm I'm about to hit that irrevocable rank. In the old system, maybe, and <laughs> you're like, oh, you're like, you're like, and you're, you're like, your hands shaking a little bit as you press battle because you're like, oh, if I lose this one, because I've had that before where I've like, I've had a run of good wins, and then I've immediately after that I've had a complete straight run of losses and gone back down to where I started. Exactly, it's sort of like things are going too well. Do I stop now? Yeah. Like how how deep is this well of luck? How deep is this well? I don't know why that come from. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And um but to me now, this new ranked format, if it's gonna be more or less continuous, it doesn't feel like a ladder. It just feels like a game mode, which actually Randoms with some more yeah. feels like rewards. And I'm actually kind of enjoying that, but it's not ranked to me anymore. Yeah, because you're not in gold. That's where the suffering is. Yeah. <laughs> um, quite it's, quite purposely so. It's so toxic up here. Yeah. <laughs> quite quite purposely so, and that's why I've stayed in, in silver. Um because it's just nicer. Yeah. It's more, it's more interesting. It's more relaxed. I can just play it like a normal game mode. So basically, you're steel clubbing. I've just heard steel, that. I've steel, steel that clubbing. Oh, oh, that's a valid coin it. Quick I'm trademark. I'm calling it steel clubbing. I've coined the term. That's Co it. Copyright pains over. Podcast over. We've peaked. <laughs> we are bullying the weaker players who can't get to gold to get that little bit of steel out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one of us streams ranked first is going to use that as their stream title. That's awesome. Tonight, it's done. I'm, make, I'm, I'm editing the stream title as we speak. <laughs> okay. Clubbing and cruppish. Okay. Uh, so let's we we've been running for about ninety minutes now. So dreams of an hour are long since passed. Let's move on to the listener Q and A. Um, oh, yeah, I can pad this for hours. It's, you know what? No, it's, no, it's no. that Austin segment. Like yeah, well, it, it's a, I mean, it's an interesting, interesting topic, and lots of people are interested in it. So I'm glad we got to talk about it. Okay, so I've pulled some. Uh, sorry if I missed any. I think we we might have had a couple of extras since I actually put these in this document. But um, uh, if I missed you, I apologize. I think I've grabbed most of them. So these questions come from my Discord. So I'll, the links to all of our Twitch channels and all of our Discords will be in the description. On certainly on YouTube. It's a little bit more difficult to stick that information into some of the other platforms, but um, certainly you can you can find us. You know, you can search for us quite easily. Um, but my Discord specifically is the one where these questions get collected uh, in the week before we record one of these. So make sure that you are in there, and make sure that you've got the warships role so that you can see the channel that we use. So um, we've got some questions. I'll just jump straight in. So, Bun Bloke uh, or Popcorn asks, will they ever release game modes like The Big Hunt, which is now in its second iteration, permanently like Operations, considering how much time they sink into its development? Doubt. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, mean, doubt. I think so. I think the amount of development time put into them 
is in the grand scheme of things relatively minor and it's something they do um in the run-up to the event and then that sort of it's used as a test bed for potential mechanics but i don't think we'll ever see them as a permanent addition because it you don't want to dilute the player base too much over too many modes you mean like permanent ranked <laughs> permanent ranked yeah um so I agree with you. I, I, it often, but the thing is, it often astonishes me how much work goes into the artwork. Um, so the three D environments and the textures and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But when okay, so, so after this big update, all the new graphical updates and tweaks and stuff, and okay, so the the team who do the ship models probably aren't the same people who are doing the map no. modeling and no. stuff. So what is what's the lighting staff doing at the moment? Underwater. What are the what are the effort what are the like the overall graphics team doing at the moment now? Like obviously they'll be tweaking and fine tuning stuff. Foliage. They, they are yeah. over. I, I guarantee at the moment they are overhauling all of the maps ready for submarines because we know they're coming yes. this year. We know that during the test uh, beds that we had on separate servers on PTS. They'd specifically chosen like two or three different maps. I think it was two maps where they'd done the complete underwater world. So obviously they're going to have to do that to all the other maps as well. So personally, um, really looking forward to the ocean floor. <laughs> like, like o ocean's remodel is going to be amazing. Trust me. I I, I cannot wait for the update of ocean. Surely it's an opportunity for them to actually put some like they could stick some cool stuff on in ocean. Just like I don't know, like a sunken action, like all yeah, the not? stuff that you've ever lost. Like there's okay, like there's a Nokia thirty three ten down there, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of army men. <laughs> but they could though. They could have like shipwreck. They could have a whale. You know, there's all sorts of stuff they could do. It definitely need a thirty three ten. Let forest. me go to DM Conway and demand it now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, they can litter the maps with the little Easter eggs and stuff. But so yeah. like on the whole, like okay, so. So basically, they are modeling seabeds and um, islands and stuff at the moment. So Which they probably good. have less to do than normal. That'd be weird for ocean because how deep is the ocean? Well, it depends on what part of the ocean yeah, that, that ocean bit, is meant to represent. The ocean or sea. Oh. Um, it could be extremely deep. It could be extremely shallow. I mean, yeah, because if, North if that part of the ocean meters. is the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is relatively shallow. Well, that's not really the ocean. That's that's, a, that's, that's technically that's a sea. Yes, I, yes. Yes. But, you, but you see, my point is like <laughs> it's a shallow area yeah. of water that could have nothing in it. Just because they call it ocean, we assume it's Atlantic or Pacific. I think going off the weather, it's probably supposed to be the Pacific. What do you mean weather? As in, it's it's mostly calm and stuff. Oh, the Atlantic tends to be even in like summer tends to be a bit rougher, whereas the Pacific is generally calm until a typhoon hits. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming soon. I think you're putting a lot more thought into this than they did. Yeah. I probably am. <laughs> um, I think they thought, let's just have a map that's just water, because then we don't have to do any islands. There you go, it's done. Um, Jokes on them, then I have to do the entire ocean Well, floor. yeah, there, there is that. Mariana so, French at all. But it, but it could. It could, you know, they could have that map having an underwater landscape. I think that could be kind of cool for the submarine play. Um, so the the surface remains, you know, featureless for the surface ships, but then the submarines get some cool, like, canyons and things to play around with. That'd be cool. Well, God knows that the submarines need all the help they can get to be interesting, because the last iteration of them was the most boring thing I've ever played. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I've had, I, know, I don't know, I had a lot of fun doing some of those tests. Um, I agree that it lost a bit of its novelty in the last round, and some of the mechanical changes were definitely not for the better, but I'm I'm kind of I'm still pretty optimistic. I'm kind of looking forward to having something else to do, basically. Um. So so anyway, I mean, one bloke. Um. Yeah. Uh. No, we don't <laughs> think that. We, I, th I think they'll carry on using those um special modes like Halloween to test new mechanics. And no, I don't think we'll ever see them coming back into operations. And no, I don't think they're going to bring back any more operations. Okay. Uh. Jono Solo asks, uh, which commander skill changes do you expect, if any? Expect. Expect? We don't expect anything. We can exactly. hope. Exactly. Expectation we don't know any more than you do. hopes are two wildly different things. We expect the removal and change of Deadeye. That's the only thing we expect. 
we have many hopes, we have many different well, opinions. It's not even on that. What could We're be hoping that I get changed. Um, we can't even expect that. That's a very good point. I think they've pretty much said that they're gonna do something. Yeah, but this is where we make the joke that, like, but yeah, that... but they also said that they're never going to add some of my beans. Yeah, but, but the thing is, no like, guns bigger than your motto. The thing mm -hmm. is, it could be anything between remove that skill and replace it with something totally different, which has nothing to do with range sniping or anything. I don't think they're going to do that. To the other end of the scale, where it's okay, well, we we'll change it to ten from ten percent to nine percent. I mean, it, it it could literally be that, or it could be somewhere in the middle. Um. Personally, I think they'll want to remove it as it stands, change the name, and replace it with something else that is sniping related. Mm -hmm. um, because one of their objectives, the, the Commander Rework, and we were talking about this last time, um, one of their objectives is to promote different types of playstyle. So they don't want to remove sniping because they think that's something they want to have people do. Um, so, so I think you'll, I think we'll see a different skill that's related to long distance gunnery. Dead eye adrenaline rush. <laughs> Who knows? Oh dear. Who knows? The further uh, away you are, the faster you reload. Genius. No, oh god, no! <laughs> oh, no. Please no, don't no, give them that the idea. Oh, oh my lord, no! <laughs> Thirty-six Jeez. kilometers of a month. Let's go. Jeez. <laughs> no way. Of a month firing like a kitakazi. Oh boy. <laughs> um. One of the things that I hope they balance is the the relative skill point cost between sniper builds and brawling builds. I don't think they will do that, but I hope they do. The other thing I think they might touch is I have seen one carrier in the wild using interceptors. Mm. Uh, so I've got a funny feeling they might do something with that column. I still have the opinion that interceptors should be the default option and then they should too. be upgradable in the spec in the fighters by the spec. Me too. Um, I think the whole fighter interceptive thing is just weird. Yep. It doesn't work very well. Okay. Um, the next one's quite long. Just bear with me while I read through the sort of uh, narrative here. So this is from Grant. Um, has Wargaming got better at balancing new ships or new ship lines? Or to put it another way, which is wor which is worse, Wargaming releasing ships or ship lines that power creep existing ships or are underpowered compared to the strongest ship lines in the games. For a very long time, it seemed that every new ship line that came out was considered to be power creeping the existing ship line, and there will be complaints from parts of the community and the CCs about it. But in the last year or two, most of the new ship lines and line splits are considered to be weak or underpowered, and there are complaints from parts of the communities and CCs about that. Um, likewise with premium ships. For many years, it was rare to see a new premium ship that wasn't considered to be strong or overpowered. Now, it's rare to see a new premium that is. Um, I guess what I'm really trying to ask is, is it bad that Wargaming are releasing new ships, tech tree ships and premiums that are not considered overpowered or strong, as existing ships are considered good or very strong, e.g. the Marco Polo? That's all Grant. So, I guess, I guess this is... Wargaming seem to be kind of trying to do something about power creep, if you look at the recent releases. I don't know whether they are or not. Um, is that... What do we think? I think the first part is that people will complain about if the sky is in the right shade of blue. <laughs> um, but yes, I think if we go back far enough, I think British heavy cruisers were considered weak on release and relatively boring but they are effective when used correctly. Russian heavy cruisers, it was meh, meh, oh sweet Jesus, Petro's busted. American battleships was... Balanced like, but dull. British heavy cruisers, yeah. balanced but dull. Yeah, balanced but... The, the, the going trend so far is balanced but dull. Yep. I would say. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm okay with that. The thing is, with the with the tech tree ships, it's not so important because obviously those have ongoing balancing. So when they start to drop behind their peers, you know, either the peers will get nerfed, which is unlikely, or the the weak tree will get buffed. Hello, Yu Yang. Please yeah. buff me. Never. Um, Garen can't get her remodeled. Yu Yang can't get her nerfs <laughs> reversed. But mom. But, but with premiums, 
obviously it's a slightly different story because if you know if a premium gets released and it turns out to be way too strong, then obviously they have to um, take. Well, the response it off. there is to pull it from store. Yeah, pull it from store until um, they can either do another version of it, Belfast Forty Three, or they oh, can. Um, but then wait again, until Belfast it gets power creeps, then. is balanced but dull. Yeah. Uh, I'd say she's underpowered. But Quite. the thing, but the thing is, humans in general are so, especially at the moment, are so black and white, absolutist I am in, from in their approach to things. That basically, if a ship comes out that isn't like ridiculously overpowered, it's crap. Well, and and that's that's the reception it will get, even if it actually it's fine. Because and fine is boring. Fine is boring, but fine is kind of what the game needs. Yes. Um, I mean, and... thinking about what premium ships have, have been released recently in the oh, past six months. Let's just pick a few. Uh, Florida. Solid. She did immediately make California irrelevant, though. But, oh. <laughs> I was about to say, California. Palo Emilio. Quirky, but, but she's a special, not a premium. It, exactly, and I think she falls into that boundary. Hey, of... not a premium. No, she's a special. She's Reese's she's Bureau. Special. Yeah. Reese's Bureau ships are specials, not premiums. Yeah, back checking my Siegfried. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Siegfried's special, not premium. Um. Leone, but I think they were just figuring <laughs> oh, yeah, out an excuse good. to get her out of the door since he's been sitting in development hell for two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lepanto. It's a tech tree ship. Not, Early release. Sorry, I don't, sorry, I don't mean the Panto. I mean Marco Polo. Giro is a clone. A special, not a premium. Uh, is it? I thought you could buy Marco Polo. With money, but I think she's still considered a special, not a premium. No, I'm pretty That's sure the, the, tier, the, tier, the tier 9 coal ships are all premiums. Okay, Because you can enough. buy them for cash. Uh, so Giro is a clone, but she's a modified clone. Is she? Uh, Performance-wise, she is not. Visually, she is. Um. What else? Um. Uh. The French Champagne? tier seven. Uh. No. Well. Yeah. Strasbourg. 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 Solid. Heisen. Yeah. Fine. Solid again. So that none of the recent it's... premiums have been. Oh my god! It this occurs is to me that actually, uh, look, just naming those ones, none of those are overpowered. It actually occurs to me that actually recent recently the premium releases have actually been pretty well balanced. Yeah, but that makes them boring. Yes, that's so what the you're saying. Is you want no power chip? Got it. Okay. Yeah. No, there's been no flag to rally around, as it were. Like, oh, that's another ship. Part nice. of the community. And that that wargaming that must be a real problem because when you release a ship that's well balanced and therefore healthy for the game's gameplay. It's bad from a hype and sales point of view. It also well, that goes into the greater issue of the inability for CC to really promote ships yeah. anyway. Yeah, but, but that's a larger issue. Yeah. Um, and I got them, and this whole thing. This is why power creep happens. It's because when you have a free to play game, especially where you've got um, premium content for that game. If that premium content isn't interesting to the customers, they're not going to buy it. And the thing that's interesting to customers is stronger than their everything else, because everyone wants their ship to be stronger than everyone else's. Um, so, so this is you know it's a constant struggle that all, especially free to play games, have. Um, but I'm actually kind of now I think about it, I'm actually really happy with how the balancing has been going for the last year or so with the premiums. I mean, um, every now and again, we'll see a dev blog like changes to ships under testing, and everyone's like, "What the why? <laughs> like, why was that?" I can't what? possibly comment. Yeah, no, as a super tester, I can't give my own opinion. But often, you'll see in discords and the forums and Reddit going, "Why was that changed?" And oh, we're all just sat there, just like, yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. But there have been times where it's like, where something's been completely out of left field. Which does tech, which but often does turn a potential, a potential Belfast mm. into a conventional premium. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think wargaming over the past twelve months have 
seemingly been more inclined to adopt a path of least resistance and release a bunch of balance ships that will over time sell reasonably well, but aren't cashing in on the oh my god factor. The oh my god factor is now moving certain controversial premiums into Christmas boxes. Luckily, Cosmic is still completely available. Since, uh, if you may recall, they made an announcement, Christmas just gone, that several desirable ships oh, yeah. are being removed. Gramyashi, Kamikaze, uh, Fujin. I think, I uh, think Missouri, Kamikaze. too. Oh. So, so from, uh, from an anti-gambling point of view, that's a bad thing. But from a game health point of view, I think overall this is a good thing. Yeah, but I want those ships. Yeah. I've already got them, so. Todd, you. So, no, I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy. I think uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it seems like their process has got better, and we're not suffering from that um, thing of CCs immediately showing brand new test ship, which is usually overpowered, and then it that reputation sticks, and so you have that sort of reputation inertia yes. problem. We don't have that anymore, really. Um, no. So that. So the, Which the is first, excellent. Yes, I think that's a great thing because it means that the first opinion that people hear, uh, other than people talking about just the stats on the page, is um, actually, yeah, this ship's fine. Um, hopefully the CCs are actually doing an honest job of that and not causing drama by saying, oh no, this ship's crap, when actually it's just fine. Just not OP. Um, yeah, and if, if you're a CC listening to this, just please don't do that, because... Hi, I'm, I'm CC listening Hi. to this. Hi, Pins. Okay, next question. Luis asks, before we time him out, uh, why do you think the release of new ship lines has been focused so much on the monetization and not so much on the player base enjoyment of the line, like what is happening with the Tier 10 battleship Cristoforo Colombo? First of all, that's a very loaded question. It is. Like, in, that, that is heavily I, loaded. I um, think they're we a actually company, just... they need to make money to survive. Well, actually, I think we just completely disagree with that in the answer to the last one. Why, <laughs> I, why do you think why do you think the release of lines is focused on my test? I don't think it away has. from premiums and they're doing it now to tech tree ships. So I early access, I understand why they did it in the first place. It was to relieve pressure on the queue and also to have an extra line of monetization. So if people want to pay to get a tech tree ship early, they can. Um, I'm totally fine with that. If people want to reach into their wallets to pay for the game by buying something that's free. I don't have a problem with that. I'm never going to do it myself, but I don't have a problem with that. Um, Your money, not mine. Don't care. Exactly. If you, if you want to pay for the game, go for it. Um, but I'm not sure what he's... What, do you know what he's referring to with um, Colombo? I think he was uh, using Colombo as the example because it's the tier 10 of, the, of this what appears to be very how is that, monetized line. How is that monetized? Can you well, get because it you got, money? Uh, you can get the extra camo and stuff. But it's the fact that, like, how many bundles you've got to... How many tokens you've got to earn to get the extra stuff for Colombo implies that you're going to have to spend a lot of doubloons, which means a lot of money to get that if you are a dedicated collector. I mean, I yeah. I the only thing I find uncomfortable about the early access stuff is that they don't make it clear. I don't think that these ships are going to be free in two months. Well, that's why you always make a big point of it on your own stream, saying exactly. like this ship will be available for free in four weeks. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I just I get concerned that players who don't pay attention. How can you not? How can you not realize it? And it says in massive letters, Italian battleships early access do people not understand the concept I mean, of early access we're getting into economic theories of like the greater fool at this point yeah, yeah. you could you could you absolutely could I, but i do get concerned that people might be getting caught out here in there um but but overall in a free-to-play game if if the company gives you an option to throw money at something that you don't need to throw money at and you throw money at it I mean, it's a free market economy. They can do that if you do it. You know, more the fool you, really. 
obviously we'll have to wait to see if any actual governmental legislation comes in that bans the practice. Then it will be quite interesting to see what they do next. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a special. Special right now here on Statstalk, right? Yeah. Normally, every week, I'll, for free, do something stupid. But if you give me money now, <laughs> I will do something stupid <laughs> in early access just for you. Special one time. But you're film. not going to tell us what it is until after we've bought the the bundle. Oh, no, it's a, it's a it's an RNG bundle. You have you have to you yeah. have to keep buying boxes to see okay. what stupid thing I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> no, I think I'll pass. Thank you very much. Yeah, fair enough. We'll be able to see what you do stupid for free in four weeks' time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um. So, Luis, I, I don't think we entirely agree with you. Um. But yeah, I, it, it's a you know it's you got to remember that it's. I think a lot of people, not not Luis specifically, but I think a lot of people react to wargaming doing things as if it was a government or if it, if it was a charity. It's a company, you know. They have to make money, um, and they make and, a lot of it. Oh, yes, they do. Apparently so. Okay, um, a question from Butcher's son. Um, after they released and removed Smolensk, they now bring Austin to the game. Do you think that Wargaming is aware of the meta-shifting effect of those ships, or are they surprised by their own work? I wouldn't really see Austin shift the meta. No, not, not compared to Smolensk. But I also, I also imagine, even if Austin is completely busted and is the best ship in the game ever, you will not hear... Anywhere near as many complaints about Austin for one very simple reason. You can see it. <laughs> She's not Russian. She's oh, not that Russian. Too. Wait, are you yeah. trying to say that American bias isn't a thing? Well, if you venture onto the uh, Russian discords and forums and such, thanks to DMC for informing us, in their circles, they believe there is American bias. I thought it was German bias. Both. When do we have British bias? There is never any British bias. Um, well, maybe when Thunderbird was released. But we're completely balanced. That's what it is. Like we are, we are completely balanced. So to go back to Butcher's question, um, are they surprised by their own work? They can be. We have seen that in the past. I think particularly NTC. Yes, uh, you can that actually was, go. So, so so some videos recently resurfaced. Um, I think people thought that they were new videos especially flamu actually posted um one of the old cc summit videos recently as an example of some, like just some examples of things that wargaming have said and done um and one of those videos that was published back in 2018 19 i can't remember now when it was was about ntc and it was actually the cc's live reaction as it happened to them being revealed for the first time what naval training center which was the predecessor to research bureau was going to be and you could just see on Wargaming's faces of the staff that were at that conference, like, what do you mean you don't like it? Like, they, they were genuinely, like, surprised. And and you could just see by their whole reaction that week uh, when it came out to the public that they they just genuinely didn't expect that reaction from us uh, that we had. And so yeah they can absolutely be surprised by the community's reaction but i think ships is not one of those areas they've released so many ships that i think they understand pretty well what people's reaction is going to be but they do yeah, no, I, yeah yeah but i, I don't yeah you know, i said i think if there's going to be complaints around austin it will be performance clouded by national bias <sighs> It's it's if she becomes a monster in King of the Sea, we are never going to hear the end of it. I really hope for everybody's sake, for the sake of our sanity, that she's crap in King of the Sea. I really I, do. Yes, I think like I think she will be she'll be one of those skill ramp ships. Yeah. Oh yeah, like we said earlier. Um it's a risky prospect. She'll either be um, useless or fantastic. There'll be yeah. no in between. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of maps she could work quite well on, like, um, uh, what's that one with the Land of Fire? Think about all the islands yep. you can use. Mm -hmm. We obviously, once the COTS is officially announced, I'm assuming we'll do a COTS special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, last question. 
from Sky. <laughs> if you could get Wargaming to do one thing, like adding when commander skills are active to the UI, what would you ask them to do? Right. Click your fingers. What one, is one the thing scope of our only. ability? <laughs> one thing only. This, this is like the genie's wish. Um, active consumables above all ships in spectator mode with visibility of um, undetected ships is a great out color. Specifically for tournament yes. spectators, yeah. yes. Yeah, that's a great one. Point yeah. myself as Lester CEO. <laughs> <laughs> then I can do okay. everything else. <laughs> okay. Well, he wins, yeah. Last wish for a million wishes, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that was within the, the spirit of the question, but okay. <laughs> that's the, yeah, okay. Um, my, you know what mine's going to be. G guess what mine's going to be. Delete CVs. Nope. Oh, the island bug. Yes. <laughs> to be fair. Change the bloody island aiming thing back so that when a ship goes unspotted for a split second, I don't shoot the bloody mountain. Okay, uh, serious, serious suggestion. Delete CVs. Have <laughs> someone, have someone on Wargaming staff on in Lister Studio who's doing some of the historical ship research and, and stuff make have a direct line of communication between Lester Studios and the very dedicated group of players who do ship lines and find designs and do all that so that those suggestions can be passed on to Wargaming in a concise and informed manner so that we can eventually start getting like so we can expand the tech trees, resolve some like sort of theme issues with them, and make sure that the ships, where possible, are in keeping with what their design is envisioned. You mean like some sort of like super program? Yeah, maybe super it historians. Could, that, it could, well, it could be that could literally be one like a, a new player contribution program. The HT program. History His test. History test. <laughs> no, but like history knowledge. It could totally be a thing. Yeah. And so that's, we that's won't... That's a great idea. Yeah. Which, is, which goes back to my whole thing about Marco Polo and Lepanto and Christopher Colombo. Drake. They may look Italian to someone who doesn't know the history, but to someone who knows the history, they are nowhere near what the Italians were thinking of. Well, it's got the red and white bits at the front and back. It must be Italian. Mm. <laughs> you can hear yeah, they're just staying in that room. Killabit just wants to fix Drake. And Monarch. <laughs> and Goliath. And, and, and Thunderer. And, 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 and Conqueror. Propellers. Three uh, propellers. Yes. Um, yes. If you want to send Killabin hate mail, just take a screenshot of um, the three I am on Drake. I'm going to get this now on Discord. Just He's like, okay. I was gonna get a bunch of random Discord DMs of just photos of the stern end Three of a propellers. Drake. Yep, use the designer's table. It's gonna be the weirdest the form of cyberbullying ever. Use the weeb port because fan then you art. have to make him look at weeb stuff as well. Fan art, he loves it. Oh, fan art. Send okay. him Drake fan art with three <laughs> massive propellers. Drawn in anime style. <laughs> well actually, well Wait, careful. three massive what? Hang on. <laughs> This is going to get weird. Okay, on that note. <laughs> on oh, that dear. note, I think... Now we'll be... discover how many of your viewers are artists. Mm. Okay, I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll end it there, I think. That's a, that's a good stopping point. We've gone pretty much exactly two hours, which is 100% more says. than I wanted to do, but that's fine. Um, so that brings us to the end of this fifth episode of Stansnock. Uh, many thanks to my co-hosts, uh, Killabin and Painzor, for joining me. You can find the links to their channels in the description for this episode if you're watching on YouTube. Or you can simply go to twitch.tv slash Killabin and twitch.tv slash Painzor with an E in the middle and drop them a follow. Uh, Killabin generally streams warships on Mondays, sometimes uh, does War Thunder at the weekends, and Painzor generally streams warships on Thursdays. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe. 
on whichever platform you are listening on. If you've listened via YouTube and you'd like a more convenient way of listening, this podcast is actually also available on Podbean, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and also on your Alexa device via TuneIn. Um, We've settled in now pretty much on a fortnightly cadence, so you can expect um, a couple of new episodes each month. Many thanks to those uh, who submitted uh, for this episode questions. Uh, much appreciated. Um, if you'd like to submit a question, keep an eye out for the question submission channel on my Discord, like I mentioned earlier. And you can get the link for that via my Twitch channel in the About box underneath. Um, please do also get in touch if you have any ideas for a theme, because um, you know we're always looking out for things to talk about. I've been Stats. You can find me at twitch.tv slash statsbloke on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. Take care of each other and we'll speak to you soon. You're doing your tennis, that's a good